Okay, here we go. We are recording. I don't know how the sounds we're doing. Basic setup. Doing it right. Hello, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the videos. It's been a long time, and that's because I'm lazy. Now, I got a new setup here trying these lights. I don't know how this looks. I didn't plan on doing this. I'm just talking into the phone, and that's okay. But what I wanted to do was show this book off before it went off to its new owner. Because this is a hell of a find that I found. And I wanted, I, I just think it's pretty cool, this story. And um, as I'm pulling up this, found this at a antique mall. And I was drawn to it because it's a pretty cool picture. Um, this triangle the black triangle with a tree of life and a serpent. I mean, that's pretty uh, symbolic there. And up here you've got some kind of flaming swords or whatever. It's called From Dawn Till Sunrise. And I didn't know what this was going to be. I thought maybe it might even be some kind of vampire book or something. But, let's see, it says From Dawn to Sunrise. There is a Star of David on there, an Islamic... And also up here, Star David here in an Islamic uh, crescent. Mrs. J. G. Smith. And so, of course, I'm going to open it up and take a look. This was D. White from uh, somewhere in New York. From Dawn till Sunrise. A review historical and philosophical. philosophical of the religious ideas of mankind. It may be demonstrated that all ancient traditions are true and that all paganism is but a system of displaced vertices. Uh, Le Meter by Mrs. J. Gregory Smith. Well, I am interested right now. Uh, Rouse's Point, New York, Lovell Printing and Publishing Company, 1876. Well, needless to say, that piqued my interest and I picked this up because, wow, we're talking about some crazy esoteric stuff. We're talking about um, world, one world religion. We're talking some interesting, interesting stuff. Um, written by some long lost cousin. It says, to the friends for whose benefit the pages were originally written and whose frequent requests they are published, this volume is effectually dedicated. Copyright Mrs. J. Gregory Smith, 1876. Then we have contents here. We talk about the religions of ancient Egypt. Religions of Buddhism, uh, the religions of Greece and Rome, etc., etc. Fascinating, fascinating topics, fascinating books. Um, almost 400 pages of this. Just absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. Um, beautifully bound still. The pages are old and yellowed, but yet still just great shape. And what is in here? Well, so, that's a cool book and everything, but you can't just say it's a cool book and not know some more stuff about it. So, I want to tell you about Auntie Eliza, or Mrs. J. Gregory Smith. She was born in Vermont and lived in Vermont. She was born in 1819 and uh, died in 1905. She lived a very interesting life, and she was, well... You should know who Jay Gregory Smith was. Um, Uncle Jay was the governor of Vermont. And her son was also, at some point, the governor of Vermont. So she was um, the first lady and the first lady emeritus mother. I don't know, whatever that was. She was the wife and um, the wife and mother of the governor of Vermont without some kind of weird trailer park hillbilly Jerry Springer thing going on. So there you go. So very interesting lady. She was actually, she was from St. Albans, and if you don't know where St. Albans is, it's at the very north part of Vermont. North, Vermont is in the very north of the United States, and St. Albans is in the very north of that. She was living there, that was where the family home was, and th this is during the Civil War now. The St. Albans raid is a very little known factoid about the, the Civil War. The Confederates sent a bunch of... Um, I don't know exactly what the story was, so I'm going to make this up, but say it was a bunch of goobers that decided they were going to be commandos, and they went and they said they were going to go to Canada and sneak in and go down. 
So they actually did this. They get into St. Albans. St. Albans is at the very top of the border. They come raiding down. They come through town. They loot a couple of banks. They shoot up the, down through Main Street. They're just causing a ruckus because nobody expected this because this was as far away as possible. Um, the men are off doing war things and, and whatever. So they, so here it is, and there's all these Confederates running around in the middle of Vermont, and our intrepid author, Mrs. Smith, is standing on the front porch of the family homestead, waving a pistol, brandishing a pistol, trying to look menacingly. I'm sure this lady was like five foot tall, weighed about 95 pounds, and she was standing out there with a big hog leg in her hand. I'm just... And as soon as everybody came, so the, the house got passed up because, you know, that was the governor's house anyway. And so she defended her house. And then as soon as everybody kind of woke up and came to their senses, she mustered a brigade, got a bunch of people armed um, and chased them out down and chased them off back up towards Canada as they went and finished off the raid. So she was a hero of the raid. Then she wrote these books. Now, I don't know who she was, where she was, what kind of, what she was doing up in the hills of Vermont, but there's always been some weirdos up there, and I love this. So she wrote this book and three others. From Dawn to Sunrise is, like I said, this, this, this uh, attempt to connect um, the underlying pinnings of all the world's religions was one. And we've been kind of tinfoil hatting our way around that for a while now. Uh, obviously, it's 2022, and I've been skirting around the edges of that my entire adult life. So that's very interesting. And then um, the uh, she wrote three other books. One was uh, Ciola, which was written as an antediluvian diary. It was, it was uh, 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 an account of the world before the Great Flood. The Mormons ended up taking that over, I think. Uh, it was the Mormons or the, or, the, some, or the Jehovah's Witnesses, I think, one of those people. And they used that text. Uh, they rewrote it, but they used that text as, as one of their founding documents. Then she wrote a book called Selma, which was a Viking love story. I can't wait to read these. I haven't read them yet. And then the third, and then an, another novel was um, called Alta, about the sinking of Atlantis. So here is this lady who um, was born when James Monroe was president. Or no, 1819, was that Jackson? No, I don't know, whatever. Old. And she's sitting up in Vermont writing stories about Atlantis, the Great Flood in the 1870s. Where did this come from? I mean, I know this happened in other places, but who was she connected to? Where did she get this from? What was she drinking in the water up there? Was she picking mushrooms? Did this come down from her from like that? Did this, how was she connected to the Europeans? I don't know. I just think it's a fascinating story. So anyway, um... Obviously, this is um, um, an amazing piece of work, and I want to read this. So why is this book going to a home? Why is it being sold? Because I don't really care about the physical thing. This is in the public domain. Please go to the archive. Support the archive.org. Please go to the archive.org and um, download this book and take a look at it. Uh, read it. Tell me what you think about it. This is um, a pretty crazy story, a pretty crazy book, um, um, a pretty crazy lady um, who I like to take claim as a relative, no matter if she really is or not. Anyway, thank you for paying attention and watching this place. This video is sponsored by my Etsy page where this was sold and you can go there and buy stuff and you can also support the archive and support all your other awesome people that take care of places and let's take a look at what's in this book and see if we can maybe learn something and isn't it amazing that um we're still there we're still there we're still trying to struggle through this we're still trying to figure out what's going on i think this uh this is another piece of the puzzle that well we have collective amnesia. It's a Graham Hancock thing, and it's the most basic, fundamental thing. And there's, you can argue about what we're, what we don't know, but the fact is, is we don't remember where we've been. And so, how are we going to know where we're going? I don't know. But hope you enjoyed that. Um, learn more about that. I basically just read her Wikipedia page, and that was uh, fascinating enough to have a story. So I'm sure we can dig deeper. And actually, reading this stuff is the way that we learn. So tell me all about it. 
and thanks for watching. Bye.